But yeah, and then he like kind of connects. He's like, I'm feeling a connection here. He's you like, know. what? He's like, you're a big guy. <laughs> I'm a big guy. We're outcasts. You, <laughs> your name starts with like, an S. My name my starts with an S. With an S. <laughs> We're the, the S brothers, man. <laughs> and Stu's like, the S brothers. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's I like how Stu's like going along with it for a minute. <laughs> yeah, like he didn't just watch this man kill so many fucking people. I found Mike. And Ice. You want some? Ooh, yucky. <laughs> I'm a skills guy. Flagpole. What did you say? Flagpole. Take your stinking bar off me, you damn dirty egg! No! You're a wizard, Harry. In spite of everything you've done for them, eventually they will hate you. And I care! What is the deal? No, do me a favor, Captain. Go fuck yourself. Language! Why so serious? What's your favorite scary movie? I'm Vengeance. Avengers! Assemble. Brayden. Andrew. I need you to deliver a package. To where? To New Chicago. New Chicago? Yeah. My Chicago. New Chicago. My New Chicago. Because this is a post-apocalyptic world. You're in New San Francisco right now. You know where you're going to have to go through to get to New Chicago, right? Yes. Vegas. And who runs Vegas? Sweet Tooth runs Vegas. We're talking about Twisted Metal. Wasn't it the other way around, though? Wasn't wasn't he trying to get to New San Francisco? Wasn't he in New Chicago? No, he was in New New San Francisco. Or he was in San Francisco trying to get to New Chicago. But he was doing all this to try to get into New San Francisco, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah, because the the reason he was in New San Francisco was he... By the way, we're, we're going to spoil the shit out of this. So if you haven't seen it and you actually care to, uh, yeah, go watch it and then come back. But, you know, if you've seen it, it's chill. If you don't care, then stick around. But, yeah, the, he makes the deal with fucking Sidney Prescott, what, Nev Campbell in New San Francisco. <laughs> What? Why don't you just call her everything but her fucking name? Her name I don't remember her character name. Like, okay, I got I got the cast list pulled up on Google, but I don't have Google open. Here it is. Oh, <laughs> that's helpful. Professional podcaster, ladies and gents. Of course, always. But yes, he makes the deal with Raven to go deliver this, to go receive this package and bring it back to her. That's the whole deal, right? And if he secedes within the 10 days, he will get into New San Francisco and get to lead a normal life, you know, before the whole Y2K thing went down. Yes. So, if you haven't pieced it together, even though we have said it, I think, twice now, we're talking about Twisted Metal, (laughs) which is a show that stars your main character. John Doe. Who is John Doe, like you said. And he is what's known as a... Milkman. What does a milkman do? Uh, a milkman makes deliveries from one place to another, and you know. Has... And he fucks your mom. Oh, is is that in the job description? I think so. Because remember, <laughs> milkmen in the fifties they they fucked a lot of women. So if you're <laughs> born in the nineteen fifties, your dad is probably not your dad. Hate to break it to you. That's t- that's rough. That's tough. I know. I know. I'm just. <laughs> There's a very specific person I'm relaying this message to, and yeah, and they're likely you know who you they're are. likely not listening to this, but no, they they listen. They listen every <laughs> week. Oh, oh, do they? Yeah. How do you yeah, know they this? They died because I just I just know the family messaged me personally and asked me to message them. So you know who you are. But anyways, <laughs> yes, like you said, milkman. They deliver shit from place to place, and. John Doe is, I guess he's the best milkman in the world, right? It would seem so. That's why he always comes back. Yeah, he's. Yeah, they say in this show that milkmen don't last long, but you know, John Doe, he's still around. He's still kicking. He's he's. How long has he been doing this? Don't they say like six years or something like that? 
N- no, he's been doing this since he was like a kid. Oh, so or what? surviving, surviving since he was a kid. I don't remember how long he was a milkman. Man, you missed the you missed the pun of the show. The pun milkmen of the show. have an expiration date. Ah, uh, yeah, that was a good one, was it not? Yeah, that's funny. You're not fucking laughing. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, it wasn't your joke, but you're welcome. Oh well, I mean, I did write it. Oh, but did you? They stole. Yeah, they, they stole it from me. So you know, whoever the writers are. I see why we're going on strike now, guys. Speaking of I'm laughs, like, who was the funniest character in this show? You are dying to get to one specific character. <laughs> Hold off a minute! Okay, so, fine. He'll, he'll have his hour. Or she'll yes. have her hour. Mm, you'll see. Okay. You just, there's no point in trying to... <laughs> 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 so, John Doe... Gets this opportunity from Raven. People don't get to live inside the cities unless, like, you're an upstanding member of society or something like that before. So I don't know why they set the, set the, uh, like all the computers failing. They set that in 2002, I'm pretty sure. And Which, not, why and wouldn't they? Not 2000? Yeah, and I don't see why they didn't set it in 2000. That makes no sense. Why would they do 2002? I don't know. That was the weirdest part of the show. Well, that was not the weirdest part, but that was the <laughs> weird part of the show that I didn't really understand. So, for a little bit of backstory, Twisted Metal is an old video game franchise that I guess... Can you can you figure out when the first Twisted Metal came out? And like when the first Mortal Kombat came out? Because I feel it, like... Wait, am I supposed to be taking a guess here, or...? No, I want you to figure it out, because I don't feel like... Oh, well, I know the first Mortal Kombat was, like, 1992. I think the first Twisted Metal was, like, 2005, but I could be way off on that one. You are most definitely way off. Really? It was, like, the 90s? Oh, no, I was just fucking with you. I don't know the fuck it came out. game. The first game in the Twisted Metal franchise... The first game in the series, which takes place during the 10th annual running of the Twisted Metal competition in Los Angeles, on Christmas Eve 2005, it was released for the PlayStation on November 5th, 1995. So, 1995. Okay, so I was 10 years off. (laughs) And the first Mortal Kombat came out, you said, in 91? 92 was my guess. 92. So, I guess games during that that time span, I guess they were just like... They were obsessed yep. with like 1992. A look, look, what can I say? I just know my Mortal Kombat. Look, I'm I'm just the Mortal Kombat guy of the podcast. You are the Mortal Kombat guy of the podcast. Look, you, I guess you're the Twisted Metal guy. Who won the, the first? Who won the first Mortal Kombat? Uh, is this a trick question? I don't know. I was just asking. So I was just gonna tell you really <sighs> no matter who you pick. Well, I don't know the answer, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> So I guess games during that time was just obsessed with like a kill kill everybody tournament style game because it there's two games and I'm sure there's plenty more that came out but it's like these games came out way too like close together not <coughs> to be like developers looking and being like oh let's hop on this type of trend you know, you know how like every like. Uh, in the mid 2010s, everybody was just like, "Oh, let's do these exosuit type video games," and then everybody's like, "Oh, let's go back in time and do these World War II type video games." It's like a trend that they hopped on. Well, so Twisted Metal started as you said, or as we said, as a as a video game that none of the video games are even close to the story that this show tells. First off, I'm pretty sure none of the video games are post-apocalyptic. Not a single one of them are post-apocalyptic. Uh, they all take place as this guy named Calypso, who we see in the show, has this tournament, and whoever wins the tournament gets to make a wish. Whatever the fuck they want. Now, here we will bring in the person that you also oh want to talk about, Sweet Tooth. Do you want to know what Sweet Tooth's wish was if he won the first tournament, if you if you made Sweet Tooth win the first tournament in the Twisted Metal game? Okay, so Sweet Tooth's right. wish if he had won the tournament. 
I have no yes. fucking clue. Sweet Tooth, if you made sweet, if you played a Sweet Tooth and was, won the tournament for, as him, Calypso asked Sweet Tooth what for, he wanted as a wish. For him to be famous? No. No? His only wish was for to get his best friend back. Oh. Was his Harold best Harold the Brown Paper Sacks. Yes. Yes. Really? So that was, that was Sweet Tooth's wish. Oh, that's so sweet. I know. Uh, you know, in another game, his wish if he won, would you like to know what that was? What? I don't know which game this was, by the way. He what? wanted to be turned into a slug. Turned into a slug? No, just a random bug. Oh, a bug. Why? Yeah. <laughs> I don't fucking know. He thought life would be simpler. Okay, I guess. But, no, I mean, it would probably end a lot fat, a lot quicker. But I, get, I don't know. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's not. So, in Twisted Metal Black, I think he had, like, the best wish or whatever. Uh, do you know what that was? I'm going to assume it, you didn't, but I'm going to ask. It's better than the Herald wish? In terms... <laughs> maybe not. I don't know what you would consider better. Okay, what, so, is it, what is it? So, Sweet Tooth was... In Twisted Metal Black, Sweet Tooth was set up for execution, right? Yes. Do you remember Preacher from the show? Yes. Well, in Twisted Metal Black, he's, like, fucking possessed by a demon or some shit, so he has, like, powers. So he cursed Sweet Tooth during his execution, and he lit his head on fire. So his head was always on fire. So his wish was, uh, he didn't want his head to be on fire anymore. Obviously. <laughs> so, Calypso's like, okay, here. Here's a vial of Preacher's blood. If you drink that, the flame will be extinguished, but you won't be able to, like, kill anybody anymore. So you want to know what Sweet Tooth did? Uh, I'm guessing he did not drink it. He threw it on the ground, stepped on it, and killed Calypso. Oh, damn. Yeah. What he the just, fuck? He's just, like, he's just it... like, yeah, we ain't doing that. And then he just fucking kills Calypso. So do you think you could tell me what to do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, do you? I mean, I that's I guess that's as good of an, any of a transition to the end, even though it's the end. Do you want to talk about the end? Talk about let's talk about our characters first. Oh, okay, okay. Do you want to talk so, about Stu and uh Stu, or do you want to talk about Quiet? I guess we haven't talked about go yet. through them as we remember them. So we had John Doe, Anthony Mackie. Did you, did you like Anthony Mackie in the show? Uh, yeah, I did too. I saw a lot of people hating on him saying he was like annoying and he was just like they kind of like made shit up for him on the flop but i'm like he's a fucking like made up character as yeah. far as anybody knows at the moment like of course they're just gonna make shit up on the platform like duh yeah i don't really know what people um, wanted out of the character like isn't the point of the show just to be ridiculous entertainment i'm pretty sure it succeeded in that yeah no fucking joke this show <laughs> When, when I first mentioned this show, what was your reaction when I told you to watch it? And I was like, let's do an episode of our Twisted Metal. What were you? What was going through your head? When you recommended the show? Yeah. Were uh, you just like, oh, fuck, I don't want to watch this. Basically, I was not expecting anything. I was like, why, yeah. why the fuck are you recommending this? <laughs> and the only reason I watched it is because I was like, Samoa Joe. You know what? It, that? And I was like, Anthony Mackie's funny. Yeah, no, I'm sure he'll have a couple. Now, I will say the humor in this show was like sometimes it was just kind of annoying, you know? Yeah, they were they ruined a few good kind of dramatic moments that they could have had just by trying to be funny. Yeah, which is a lot you know, of things. A funny. lot of things do that. Exactly. That's why I'm not like hating on it <laughs> because that happens a lot. It's very common. Yeah, it's commonplace. It's not. Like, this is the only thing that does that. <laughs> yeah, so Quiet. What did you think about Quiet? I thought she was a bitch at first, even though I know her brother I mean, killed her, killed himself, but, like, still. <laughs> so we get introduced to Quiet, who is trying to steal Anthony Mackie's car. This is how we get introduced to her. And he, like, pulls a gun or something on him, and, and her and her brother run off. Well, she goes to flip Anthony Mackey off, and she's missing, like, her middle finger. And so then she gets chased down by, we'll transition to another character here, Officer Stone, Mm. who Mm. they, you can just go look up, like, videos that explain 
the differences between Officer Stone and in this version and the video games. So his this this version of Officer Stone is the most like he he kind of represents Officer Stone from Twisted Metal Black the most. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he is what is that actor's name? Oh, Sandman it's a uh, from Spider Man Three. Yeah, it is Sandman from fucking Spider Man Three. It is. Oh, dude, he's been in some other shit too. You got the fucking cast list. Pull it off. I did until he fucking told me to look up Mortal Kombat and shit. By the way, I don't even know if I ever said it. Liu Kang won the first Mortal Kombat tournament. You're welcome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that took you a while. <laughs> Thomas Hayden Church was Agent Stone yes, in this. Yes, that's his name. Yeah. He's phenomenal in this. He He's like comes across as such an intimidating presence, but then you like see his backstory. And did you not think I can fucking kick Agent Stone's ass? Did you think that at any point? Dude, I did, but he was like, dude, I don't know. Just he was so, he exuded fucking confident. He was like, he believed in what he was doing so fucking much. (laughs) Yeah, but at the end of the day, though, he was kind of a sniveling little pussy, you know? Yeah, he's a, yeah, he was always a bitch, But, but. So he, I think he gives like, and I've seen a lot of people say this was corny, but I he gave like one of the best lines. I, th- I think he, he looked a to lot live. tougher like in present day than he did in the flashbacks. Like in the flashbacks, I absolutely thought I could have oh, kicked yeah. his ass. But like he just looked yeah. like a gruff old man as like the present day police officer. I was like, I don't know if I would take him or not. <laughs> no. So yeah, he uh he he gives one of the best lines though. So he catches Quiet and her brother, who I cannot sadly remember the name of his character. But he catches them, and he says he's here to bring law and order back to the divided states of America. And I fucking like that. I was like, okay, that was a pretty good line there. Because the way he delivered it, he's just like, he just kind of stands up or whatever as he does it. And he's like, yeah. He probably probably puffed his chest out, and he's walking back to the car. And in his mind, he's probably thinking, fuck yeah, that was badass delivery. Fuck yeah. His name was uh, uh, Loud. The brother. That's a stupid fucking name. <laughs> and quiet, is it? I mean, yeah, but I don't care. It doesn't really bother me. Anyways. Look, so the is. only cool-ass name in this show is Sweet Tooth, okay? Oh, my God. It really <laughs> fucked me up. But uh, he gives them a gun. He gives loud and quiet a, a gun with one bullet, and he's like, well, we can either, like, napalm you both, or one of you can kill yourselves. You know, pick. And so Loud shoots himself in the head. And that yep. makes Quiet go quiet. There's a lot of things we're probably going to miss when talking about this show. Oh, yeah, so, like, It's you 10 episodes. Yeah, so, like, sorry if we missed something that, that you really liked. I did, you know what I did enjoy? The fact they were 30-minute episodes. Oh, yeah, dude. It went, like, a, it went through, like, a breeze. It went by so fast. Yeah. Yeah, and it was like at the end of it, I was like, oh, fuck, that's all 10? Damn. And now I'm like kind of excited for a season. You don't need fucking 30 episodes a season, and you don't need fucking 10 episodes an hour and 15 minutes each. You don't need that shit. But yet so many fucking shows do that, and it's so annoying. Yeah, it is. Just make it however long it needs to be and end it there. It works so much better that way. I would rather quality over quantity. I would rather watch. Me too. Any day. Any day. Half ass, you know, just turn your brain off type of show like this than watch some fucking show that tries to fit 17 storylines in one episode and then resolve at least two of them before the next one. It's like, no, fuck that. You just give me a fucking. Just every now and again, release a show that's a fucking week to week story like this was. This was like a fucking. It really did not feel like they were following, a, well, they were following like a central plot, but it seemed like it was new, villain of the day type episodes for the most part, which, you know, reminds me of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So, yeah, it just felt like a, yeah. it, I don't know, it just felt like a journey because, you know, it's just John on his delivery. Anyway. Yeah, and it was a journey. Yeah. And like every now yeah. and then, like even when, like some of Sweet Two stuff was separate, like it cut to Sweet Two, they gave him his little moments in the episodes. Yeah, and then you so, know eventually uh, well, that all bled back up. Like it, yeah. the first time we see Sweet Tooth, it was with John. The central point is always John, 
and then yes, like we don't the the, the the every time we see Sweet Tooth between like when we first see him with John until he's back with John on screen at the same time, it it just cuts between John and Sweet Tooth basically. Those are like the those two and Stone are kind of the big three until like the Sweet Tooth stuff gets really involved with the Stone stuff, and of course the Stone stuff kind of stays involved with John stuff. So yeah, uh, what was the actress's name who played? quiet stephanie beatrice yeah she's uh if you ever watched brooklyn 99 she's was it rosa yeah, i think Ro- from brooklyn 99 rosa diaz yeah uh i thought she was pretty great in this like the only time i was slightly annoyed with her is when they went to new chicago and they went down in the thing and they met or they didn't meet calypso but then like heard him to the speaker and stuff and then she just like kept like I don't know what she kept doing down there. She's just like, oh my God, it's, do you think this is dry ice for a smoke effect or something? I'm like, all right. Like, I get it. Fucking quit. It's kind of yeah. annoying now. Yeah. But it wasn't, it wasn't like bad. It wasn't like overbearing. It lasted as long as it needed to, in my opinion. Like, it didn't go any longer than, if it would have went a few minutes longer, I would have been like, this is fucking stupid. Please quit. Yeah, no, there was never anything that was like too overbearing or anything. What did you think about uh, her and John's relationship? Uh, I thought it was fine. It did get annoying at times, especially how, like, they were so intimate at times and then, like, so pushy. And that happened. It's not that that happened. It's just how often it did happen. Like, it happened so many times before they finally put their differences aside. We're like, look, okay, yeah, we got to work together to survive. It's like, you should have figured this out a little sooner. You shouldn't have been through this five fucking times. Yeah, well, this is the cycle. They fought, they fucked, they had a big falling out, and then they got back together. And then they fought, then they fucked, then they had a big falling out, and then they got back together. And then that happened, like, yeah, that happened probably three times. It, it was just like way too much. Fucking stupid. All right, I get it. Like you could do it twice. You could do it like you know. You could let quiet. Yeah, I think once. I think if you do it twice, yeah, have it be quiet's fault one time, have it be John's fault the other. Like you don't need it any more than that. Yeah, but and then you have to make the other character understand though yeah. that it's like okay, he's going through the same thing or she's going through the same thing that I just did. Like. I have to cut this person some slack instead of just being a fucking all pissed off about it. And like, I think the biggest, the biggest moment of that was like when quiet fucking drugged him on the outskirts of to- Topeka. Yeah. And then she just ran off and it's like, she went in there to get herself killed. Right. And then John wants to fucking sacrifice himself basically to get his car that saved his life, yeah. which was kind of stupid but you know whatever i get he has that's the only thing he has his family to him that he knows of yeah. that car so i kind of get it but at the same time you literally think you found a family in quiet why jeopardize that for the car you know but he does basically the same thing that quiet did why did she get pissed off at him i don't know dude <laughs> like that didn't that, didn't, that was the only thing that was just like and there were probably a few more times that this should happen, but like, fuck, I don't know. I can't remember off the top of my head. Like I said, it we will miss some stuff, but dude, I almost I, feel I like even... almost feel like the falling out of like Stu's and Mike's friendship was handled better than the falling out of John's and Quiet's relationship yeah. was. Well, let's let's talk about uh, Stu and Mike, dude. I so honestly, they... I kind of love them, like th- them and how. Eventually, they tied into Sweet Tooth. Like, I loved all of that. It was probably my favorite thing in the whole show, them and Sweet Tooth. <laughs> Mostly so, Sweet I don't Tooth, remember... But... I don't remember if Wyatt was a Twisted Metal character, but Mike and Stu, they are Twisted Metal characters. It's just they've been changed very heavily. Really? Like, yes, they are. They have a... They are characters in a game. And that's, I don't remember what they drive or anything like that. very interesting. Yeah, but like I said, I don't remember what they drive, nothing like that. But they are characters; they're not made up. They they have a uh, yeah. Because I, have, I'm like, glad you said that because I kind of thought they probably were just made up for the show, like kind of just quirky characters to throw in there. Yeah. Uh. So they we find we get introduced to Mike and Sue 
And probably <laughs> the best way we get introduced to a character, maybe other than Sweet Tooth, oh. which is just like they're just like chilling in a bathtub by. Uh, well, what you say you called? say chilling, but they were imprisoned in a bathtub, being seasoned. That is true. by some cannibals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the kitten and one cannibal's like, "Damn it! I told you not to not to marinate them both in the teriyaki." Yeah, <laughs> it's just like, "Here, I'll add some." What did he say? Dude, I honestly, once that started, I had no fucking clue what was going on or what was going to happen, and it's I had just so I had no idea that these guys would like end up being so relevant too. Like, I kind of. Honestly, you know, once Stu gets left for dead in the third episode or whatever by John and Quiet, once they escape after Stone captures them all, t- Stu helps them escape. I, and I thought I thought, I thought he was Stone just going to die yeah. for missing. Yeah, but yeah, then yeah, I thought, I thought we'll get to that. But yeah, them being yeah. seasoned by the cannibals, and then Stone saves them and recruits them. Yeah, and so they're like they're looking at this Stone guy because they were. They were guards for one of these cities, and they both fell asleep. Now, the reason they fell asleep is because Stu has a CPAP machine, which Mike traded off for porn, which I thought was fucking hilarious. (laughs) That was just so fucking golden. And so they both fell asleep at their post. Uh, porn Porn is very valued in this universe. It is very valued in this universe. And it's honestly, honestly, I probably would not be far off from what would happen in the real world if, like, all the technology ceased to exist. Yeah, (laughs) new mags are apparently the way to go. Yeah, if you got any of those, like, shelved anywhere, save them up, baby. If the technology ever dies, you're sitting on a gold mine. You are. (laughs) So, Stu and Mike look at Stone like he's some sort of savior, some sort of hero. Like, he's going to bring the world back to order. Well, as you probably well, would after, you know, someone literally just saved your fucking life. Saved you from, not just saved your life, but saved you from being fucking eaten by another human yeah. being. Oh, I'm not saying, I'm not saying they were wrong to think it. It's just like, that's what, that's the way they look at him at this moment. Yeah. No, it's, so this is why, like, I really love Stu in this show. Like, I understand it. Like, his perspective makes probably the most sense. Just to me, out of most characters in this fucking show. Yeah. So Stu and Mike, they they get tasked like their their introduction thing or their uh, what's it called? I guess initiation is yeah. there's a broke down truck and they're they're told to kill the vultures that go near the truck. Vultures are just people. They're basically just scavengers, is all they are. And so Mike kills the first one, and Stu's job is to take the second one out. Well, he shoots him in the leg. Which probably saved his life. And Mike finishes him off. And then Stone is like, Oh, you missed. He's like, oh, it's a rookie mistake. And then he just gets real stern. And he looks at him and he says, And don't let it happen again. And Stu's like, hey, I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah. And Mike's, so, Mike's like, I just saved your ass, man. Yeah. He's like, uh, what did he tell him? Did you tell him he owed him or something like that? Uh, thanks, probably. Something like that. Yeah, anyways, he's like, yeah, you owe me, bitch, or some shit like that. And she was like, no, don't call me a bitch. Man, don't call me big guy. I don't like it when people call me big guy. And uh, I guess I guess the next logical character we should talk about is Sweet Tooth, because he's about to... Uh, man, our storytelling abilities are awful. <laughs> awesome. We're all over awesome! I came to awesome. play! Awesome! <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but no, so Sweet Tooth, we get introduced to him. I didn't know this. He was voiced by Will Arnett, but he was portrayed by Samoa Joe. Yeah. Samoa Joe is probably, no offense to anybody else in this show, and it's maybe because like I, I do watch professional wrestling and stuff, but Samoa Joe, like Anthony Mackie is not a small guy, but Samoa Joe standing next to Anthony Mackie, I would <laughs> fear for my life. If I was Anthony Mackie, because Samoa <laughs> Joe really seems like he could fucking hurt you. Oh my god, bad. dude. Samoa Joe. It's not, and I'm not, I'm not even calling Samoa Joe like fat or anything. He's it's not. It's just like when he, he's, no, he's, no, no, a, he's just not. a big man. He's, he's got like, yeah, obviously he's, he's carrying around maybe like more gut than, than Anthony Mackie is or anything. And Anthony Mackie, which I did appreciate, wasn't even ripped for this show. Did he's, you notice that? He was just kind of bulk. Yeah. 
I mean, I mean, like, Samoa Joe carried around plenty of muscle with him. Oh yeah, no, no, no. You would you would look at him like hold that machete, and you could just see like that tricep and his bicep and his just forearm. That thing was like rock solid, dude. Even like his, like, even oh, like you damn. know the gut you're talking about. Like it, like you, like sure he's got a gut, but like you can tell it's not like it's fat. It's like he's got muscle there. He's got muscle that under man. that. <laughs> yeah, that man is just a physical presence. Yeah, it's like show. I don't want to fuck with him ever. I don't want to. I don't want to be within twenty feet of that guy. So Quiet and uh, John Doe are fighting in the desert. And they meet up. I don't even remember how the fuck they meet up. Oh, Quiet doesn't Quiet steal his car, and then he pulls the gun or goes to steal his car, and then she pulls the gun on him, and then he pulls the gun on her. Yeah. And then somebody pulls a knife or some shit. That all happens. But we get introduced to Sweet Tooth that way, and he's just like, "Are you guys gonna come to my show?" <laughs> well, you saw Sweet Tooth before that because he, when they're like, you know, who runs through Vegas. And th- it cuts to Sweet Tooth, like, just in the truck. And he doesn't say anything, he just laughs. That That's the yeah. introduction, I guess. Yeah, but, like, our first introduction, like, I meant, like, him speaking. And, like, oh, okay. we actually, like, seeing him for, like, a prolonged time is, is this. Yeah, his first and, uh, like, line of dialogue is in the scene. Yeah. And so they, like, crash into this this casino thing. And, you know, Quiet runs away and all this shit. And then... uh John Doe and Sweet Tooth start singing a fucking song together, which I agree this is probably the most cringy, the most cringy thing for this show. Whatever song they were singing apparently turned off a lot of Twisted Metal fans. They're like, you ruined Sweet Tooth when they did this. I'm not that big of a Twisted Metal fan. Like, I enjoyed Twisted Metal Black. That was the only game I ever played. But, I mean, I was just like, whatever. This is a, this is a, kind of a goofy show so i could imagine they're gonna make sweet tooth a little goofy i figured they would redeem him somehow but i knew they were gonna make him a little a little yeah you know dumbed down a little bit yeah not so like scary like he was in like twisted metal black (laughs) but uh, he's still pretty intimidating though yeah so john and sweet tooth kind of become like kind of become friends and he's like oh okay you're gonna come to my show sweet he's like i love the sound of uh meat slaps or whatever it was it's just when, basically, just when you clap. Yeah. And so he takes him back, and John Doe looks back, and he's like, he's like, oh, shit. And you see quiet in, like, this giant fish tank. He's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Found that crawling through the ventilation system. I'm like, when the fuck did you have time to go find him? <laughs> I don't know what he found her either, dude, between, like, yeah. whenever he brought John the fuck there. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, there's a dead body in there. He's like, that guy lasted, like, what did he say, like, almost three weeks or some shit like that? He's like, I feel like she could last a lot longer. <laughs> and John's like, she's like, help me. And he's like, why the fuck would I help you? And then he just holds, she holds up his car keys. He's yeah. like, damn. <laughs> that was funny. I I actually, I think that was, like, one of the first times this show, like, made me laugh, laugh. Like, out loud kind of laugh. But... So they sit through his fucking performance. The Harold, which is the Harold thing kind of made me laugh. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, he says, uh, what did he fucking say? Uh, oh, yeah, I just need a best friend in the world or something like that. And he's like, that's why I got Harold. <laughs> yeah. He can't ever lie to me or anything like that. Yeah, he can't ever lie to me. He's never lied to me. Yeah, and then he's, like, yeah, he's never lied to anyone. Life. He can't. Yeah. Yeah. And then John's like, yeah, I got an envelope. He's like, oh, really? Yeah, oh, who's that? He's like, that's my car. He's like, this guy's friends with his car. <laughs> what a weirdo. And then he just brushes it off and walks away. I was like, this motherfucker is friends with a paper bag. Not being like, if friends with his car is a fucking, makes him a fucking weirdo. I was like, this is fucking great. I love him. Oh. oh my God. He's so fucked up, but he's so great. He's so fucking funny. Yeah. It then was, he, it was then, yeah, then he puts on a show for uh, John and Quiet. That's that's the yeah. reason he was quiet out. Is John is like, look, having more than an audience of one. Yeah, and he's like, oh, that's a good point and whatnot. <laughs> so Quiet gets out and he's like, he finally gets through the performance and he's like, what did you think of my show, John? And he's like, oh, it was great, man. It was great. It was great. And Sweet Tooth starts getting pissed yeah, and then he- Quiet finally speaks up. Just, it, it was shit. Sucked. Yeah. He's like, 
What did you say? It's like it was fucking terrible. You made a grade A garbage. Yeah, you made a fucking play about a hotel. You dumb piece of shit. You know she didn't say that, but get original. Yeah, and he's like, "Do you think the same thing?" Talking to John, he's like, "Yeah, man." He's like, "It was fucking bad." What can I say? Boring. As we do, it's just like, "Thank you." All right, thank you guys. Thanks for being honest. It's like you you texted me and you're like, man, we do just really appreciate the honesty. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no fucking joke. Don't lie to that man. Don't ever lie to him, man. If you if you think it's gonna be an insult, if it's the truth, fucking tell him. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, what? I don't know. If you told him he was ugly, how would he respond? <laughs> well, you can't see his face. That's true. So he's, I think he would beautiful. just be like, yeah. yeah. What if I think it's he's a beautiful man? Oh, well, that's kind of weird. <laughs> wow, okay. Whatever. Yeah. So, they were telling Sweet Tooth, uh, or they were saying that they should travel or whatever, and then Sweet Tooth's just like, oh, no, 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 they were saying they were going to New Chicago. And New Sweet San Tooth's Francisco. just like, or, no, they were traveling to New Chicago. Yeah, to get the package, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Sweet Tooth's just like, yeah, I'll fucking I'll go to places too. And they're like, oh. Fuck. And they just got this motherfucker out of us. Well, they were telling him to leave Vegas and shit. Or oh, whatever. Yeah. To, to, to go and they were like, to, once yeah. he finally was... Yeah. And then they're go just live like, his oh, dreams. Shit. Yeah, well, like, what? <laughs> take your show on the road. And he's just like, oh, yeah, I will. And they're like, oh, fuck. What, did, what hell did we just bring <laughs> up on the world? Oh, boy. What, yeah. And what so hell Sweet indeed. Tooth, yeah, so Sweet Tooth takes off. And... Then we finally, we're, we're going back. We don't see him for a few episodes, but we go back and, uh. Stu. Uh, go, well, yeah, we're going back to Stu, but John and Quiet end up at this fucking, it was the Hoover Dam, where that's where, like, Officer Stone has this giant blockade set up across the western border, and he monitors who goes in and whatnot. Yes. And the, the whole joke is it's a, it's a fucking giant DMV. And you have to have an open over the road open road license or some shit like that. And so <laughs> why is like trying to fucking kill them or whatever and they have to walk the red line, which is just it's it's a whole ordeal. There was a fucking stupid Barbie joke and then filling out forms. Like, what did you think of that? That whole fucking playing the I'm a Barbie girl song and then making them fill out forms. What did you think of that whole gag? That was stupid. Yeah, I didn't like it either. I didn't thought it was just dumb. And I mean, I get it. Yeah, maybe if you were younger, you'd find that funny. But like, I don't know. I I'm wondering like if they just did that since like, you know, Barbie literally just came out. They knew like they were re- going to release the show within this time period. If they just did it since it was going to be relevant to a movie that was obviously going to make a lot of money because IP. That's the only thing I can really yeah. think of. I. I don't know. I, that's one of them dramatic moments. I feel like they kind of ruined. Yeah. By by doing that over the top of it. That that was probably the one moment of the show where I got like kind of annoyed and like eye rolled, you know. Yeah, but it it kind of makes up for it. Like whenever John and Quiet are having to walk the red line, and then they open the door, and it's just like fucking people, all the dead bodies at the bottom of the Hoover Dam, and they're like, "What the." Fuck? They're like freaking the fuck out over it, and then they just yeah. and then John and Clyde are just like, "Well, fuck it, man, you're gonna have to shoot me and throw my ass down there. I'm not fucking going down there." And Stu's just kind of like, "Come on, guys, come on, please, please." And he's then like, Stu helps him. Escape. He's like, "Damn it!" And he cuts the zip ties. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. He takes him to the gift shop and cuts the zip ties. Yeah. Then they uh, but, do, like change clothes or whatever, and then run the fuck away, get the fuck out of there. And so why they, they it go goes to, to kill the second in command? No, she goes to kill Stone, but he's not there. Yeah, well, the second in yeah. command, Shepard is, who yeah, is correct. also another twisted metal character. Yeah, and he's that's the reason um, they're like in to begin with is because he recognized her. Yes, well, no, she. She walked up and tried to shoot him in the head. Yeah, because they recognize said, each other. Eat my ass, motherfucker. Yeah. And she went to fucking shoot him, and then she got tased. <laughs> yeah, dude, uh, Mike tased her. Yeah. And then fucking John's like, why the fuck? And then he got tased, too. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Stu, but, Stu came in with that one. So she killed Shepard, 
when he has fucking pants around his ankles jacking off the fucking hentai porn. And yeah, that was just a. Yeah, this was know, probably was like the weirdest weird. episode of them all, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was just kind of like a. I mean, I liked seeing Shepard get killed because, you know, he's a fucking cunt. Piece of shit, yeah. But yeah, just a piece of shit asshole. Like, because he's part of the reason that Loud had to kill himself. Like, you yeah, know, he was there for that. And he's the one who branded yep. Quiet. By the way, Quiet got branded. So they would, she would think twice before committing any of her crimes again, is what the whole thing was. But, um, uh, so she kills Shepard. She meets back up with Stu and, and uh, John. Well, the battery was dead because they left the dome light on. So they're pushing it out of like the parking garage. Yeah. And poor fucking Stu is pushing the car. Oh my John God. gets in and the fucking trunk pops up and hits Stu in the face and he just collapses because he got knocked out. Dude, and- I was I was so pissed when that happened. I'm pretty sure I texted you. I was like, "What the fuck? They just left Stu for dead." And then, yeah, a few episodes later, uh huh. And they're out of there. They who said we should go back? And he's like, "Fuck no." I think uh, I think Quiet was like, "Should we go back or something like that?" He's like, "Fuck that, dude." Thank you. Oh no, no, it was that John. It was John, think, yeah. yeah. And Quiet was like, "What, what are we gonna do?" Or like. <laughs> whatever it's too late for that something like that yeah and he's just like yeah you're right so they figure they they end up going to topeka because uh quiet lies to john about oh yeah uh, what, what it is it's it being a wait safe a haven? no walled city yeah no walled city that's where her and her brother were supposedly trying to go but in reality that's the headquarters for the uh highwaymen it's stone headquarters. Stone, agent stone's like fucking headquarter things. Uh, there's two characters you meet in Topeka, but I don't remember what their names was. It's a brother and sister. They're also twisted metal characters. A brother and a sister. Uh, yeah, you don't remember them. They're not in the show very much. Damn. I think they die at the end of the show. Are, are, are it, they are they part of the crew at the end? Like in the semi? No. No. Okay. No, I don't know. No, the, I don't do you remember this. the woman? The woman who recognized Quiet when she was admiring the Statue of Stone? Yes. In Topeka? That's the sister. The guy with her is the brother. Okay. Yeah, it's they're, they're almost irrelevant. I just don't remember the characters' names. But, so we get this whole, like, bonding element between John and uh, Quiet. And then they get, get, dude, that truck scene was fucking awesome was it not truck scene yeah where they're driving and they hear like the the jake break on the semi and they're like oh i and john's like i got stealth mode he turns his headlights off and then fucking headlights come on behind him he's like oh they got stealth mode too and then all the fucking lights of the trucks come on and they get sucked up they get eaten by the big truck i don't know if i remember this you don't remember that i don't think so are you serious? No, I don't. The trailer, the trailer drops down on the tr- on the truck. The trailer opens basically, and they drive up. Oh the yeah, when yeah they get surrounded by the semis. Yeah, I know. Okay, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. You said they got swallowed, so I was like envisioning something way different. They just kind of drive into the oh, back no, of the truck what, because they had no, yeah they had nowhere else to go. Yeah, that's what John said. Yeah, okay. And yeah, she's yeah. like, and Quiet said something like. Uh, like, you should have got us out of here or some shit like that. And he's like, did you not get swallowed up by the semi? You were there, too. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... He had a lot of dramatic lines like that. Yeah. Um, we meet, we meet, uh, the grandmother. Like, yes, not, yes. It's, like, Grandma Deed or something like that. She's a Twisted Metal character, Gra- Gra- and then we also Grandma, meet- Granny Dread, I think was her name. Granny Dread, that was it. That's what it was. You're right. And then we meet, uh, I cannot remember her name, but she drives Twister, the little sports car thing. Yeah. We meet her. Let's see. Is she uh, she's, she's a Twisted Metal character as well. But, so we meet them, and it's like, their whole little, like, city convoy thing is so cool to me. I feel like that's awesome. They have that stupid joke where they're like, yeah, nothing goes to waste. Not even our waste. And then... They basically were like, we make diesel feel a lot of poop. And it's like, okay. All right. 
you're not that's not funny that's just kind of gross i don't care like why are you why are you explaining this more than you need to so the truckers use john and and his amazing milkman abilities to go pick up medicine for granny yes and uh what that is they go pick up medicine from a girl who is i guess an ex-lover i guess that's what she was she was an ex-lover of uh, Miranda, the... Miranda Watts was the chick's name that drives the sport car. Oh, okay. Yeah. Miranda Watts. Okay. Yeah. She was Twister. Yeah. She, Miranda Watts, she drives Twister or whatever. Yeah. She's also a Twisted Metal character. Uh, in this show, her girlfriend was Flower Power, which Amber. is another Twisted Metal character. Amber, Amber Rose. Yeah. Amber Rose. She drives Flower Power. Uh, so they go pick up some medicine for Granny. But for Amber Rose, and she paralyzes John and Quiet because she thinks they're uh, what is the group called? The priest group, the holy men, the holy men. Yeah, no, yeah, uh, the, that whole thing was they, they're 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 an odd group of individuals, they're just kind of a bunch yeah. of druggies, huh? Yeah, they're a bunch of uh, submissive druggies, and yeah, very submissive druggies, and fiends, they are fiends, they <laughs> are, they're not the fiend. But no, they are fiends. They're not the fiend Bray Wyatt. No, not at all. No, because can you believe they had him beat L.A. Knight at the Royal Rumble, and uh, L.A. Knight is now the megastar, and Bray Wyatt is like on the outs with the company. Yeah, where the fuck is Bray Wyatt? I don't know, man. That's so weird. Dude, Bray Wyatt like came back, was relevant there for like, and being pushed somewhat for like two or three months, and then like just disappeared off the face of the planet again. He was. He was supposed to have a match with Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania. Yeah, I know, and that never happened. Where the yeah, fuck is Bobby really Lashley bad. right now? I don't know where he is yeah, either. Fucking chilling. Chilling, dog. Yeah. Ooh, you want to see something that's kind of funny? What? So there was Zach Ryan, my all-time, I think, favorite music artist, had yeah. a concert in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Guess who showed up at his show? Brock Lesnar. Brock fucking led him. And <laughs> he brought him on stage. He brought him on stage and he oh, sung Revival with him. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Dude. Zach's like, give it up. Zach always at the end of Revival. Revival, the live version of Revival is like a 10 to 15 minute song normally. Dang. And it's just a record kind of repeating over and over again. He likes to give it up for his band and stuff during that time because it's the last show that, or the last song they play. And he said, uh, join me on stage is uh, Mr. Brock Lesnar. And then he sings the chorus again, and he gets Brock on the mic. And Brock's just up there fucking. I saw a bunch of comments on TikTok. It said, man, this is just a few days after SummerSlam, and now Brock's out here doing side quests, trying to get back to the main story. <laughs> I fucking lost my mind with that shit. That's so <laughs> fucking funny. No, this, like, was, this was recent. This was like the other day. I think the Minneapolis concert was either last night or the night before. Oh my god, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, this was just a few days removed from SummerSlam. Like four, I think. Dude, four days. Four. I don't feel like it's going to happen, but part of me just wants Brock to, you know, just win one more world title. I just I don't know. I, I, it, it just feels wrong, him not having a title. Dude, what if in the next season, I'm sure there's like, it's, oh, oh, so... What if they got somebody like Bobby Lashley or Brock Lesnar to play one of the characters named like Axel? What he is is he's got like two tractor tires that he's like in between, and he's just this big buff guy that rolls around on fucking tractor tires. What? Well, okay. Ooh. Yeah, you don't fucking. You've never played Twisted Metal, so of course you don't. Mm-hmm. Whatever. That'd be cool as fuck. That would. You're just. You're just dumb. I just agree with you. you. Oh. Yeah, see, you're smart because you agree with me. Where were we at? What were we even talking about? Oh no, we can talk about Sweet Tooth some more though. We can talk about okay, Sweet Tooth about uh, saving Stew. Here, wait. Let's let's just finish the rest of the story here. Uh, basically, a bunch of bullshit happens. Nothing really of relevance happens. We can introduce some, some characters. The preacher being one of them. Probably some other characters that I don't remember. Uh, then Granny died. For, yeah. you know, because shits and gigs. And Sweet Tooth saves Stu. 
Now, this is basically what <laughs> I would have rather seen. The S Brothers. The yes, S Brothers I wish this show was just the together. S Brothers. Dude, it was... Is, is that guy who played Stu, is he the guy from Peacemaker? Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, is it not the same guy? Because that's the kind of vibe that guy gave off. Was that guy... Remember that guy from Peacemaker? I know who you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, the the bigger guy. He fucking kind of gave off the same vibes that Stu... Uh, that Stu was giving off. So Sweet Tooth just fucking rolls up. When I saw his fucking van roll up at the Hoover Dam, I just started fucking laughing. And that guy, the guard, like, stops Sweet Tooth at the gate, and he's like, you want to see my show? And the guard's like, I need you to st- show me your open, your, your, uh, ORL. He's like, oral? <laughs> Which is the same joke that John did. But he's like, oral? Anyways, Sweet Tooth gets out of the fucking van and puts a grenade in the dude's mouth and blows him up, then just fucking goes inside. Or no, 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 Sweet Tooth did a different joke. He, did, he didn't say oral, he said or all. Oh yeah, or all. <laughs> yeah, or all, and it, then he said whatever the fuck he's gonna do. <laughs> so he like, he like shifted into a threat. He didn't make it a joke. <laughs> but he just goes in that fucking facility and kills everyone just fucking kills everyone uh, did you and did you even say how he killed that guy he put a grenade in his mouth and then he pulled the pin and he's like let me pull the pin on this <laughs> yeah and then just fucking drives off and the dude's head explodes i think i said that but i'm really not sure i could have i could have missed it uh you might have said i don't i don't think he said the joke part anyway i thought it was funny when he oh. said that let's pull the pin on this it's on yeah. the nose but i don't know it just worked for that character <laughs> Yeah, so, so fucking Sweet Tooth comes in, saves everybody, and he doesn't like, he doesn't like get with Stu just then. But there was this, there was this guard that's been giving Stu some shit, even from when he was a guard. So for helping John and Quiet escape, Stu is now going to be forced to walk the red line, you know? Our boy, our boy is in trouble right now. And Mike is the person who captured him. So Stu kind of has every reason to hate Mike. Honestly, yes, literally, because Mike was going to get him killed. Mike was literally going to get him killed. Yeah, he would be so, dead. He would literally be dead if Sweet Tooth hadn't shown up. Exactly. So Sweet Tooth shows up and saves him. Well, the guard that had been giving Stu some shit, man, he catches Stu and he like pulls a gun on him or whatever, and fucking Sweet or, or yeah, Sweet Tooth comes up and fucking kills the man. Just outright kills him. Is, and Mike and Stu has blood all over him, the, the guard's blood, like, all over his face and shit. <laughs> and probably the, one of the best jokes, he's like, need a hand? And yeah. he's like, that fucking, he helps him up, and he's like, you can't have this one, though. Or he tells him that he can have it, he has, like, plenty more or some shit like that. <laughs> that was fucking, I don't remember the joke exactly, and I butchered it, and I feel bad, but... No, it's I know what you're saying, though, days. because, like, I saw the need a hand part coming, obviously, because he was holding someone's fucking hand, but then, then he's yeah. like, no, nah, you can't have this one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get your own. But, yeah, and then he, like, kind of connects. He's like, I'm feeling a connection here. He's you like, know. what? He's like, you're a big guy. <laughs> I'm a big guy. We're outcast. You, your name starts with like, an S. My name my starts with an S. with an S. <laughs> <laughs> We're the, the S brothers, man. <laughs> and Stu's like the S brothers. <laughs> yeah, dude, I like how <laughs> Stu's like going along with it for a minute. Yeah, like he didn't <laughs> just watch this man kill so many fucking people. <laughs> dude, he's probably, people begging. For he's their probably still like wives. part of his brain is probably just traumatized, and the other part's just like, well, th- it's th- like this Stockholm guy. Syndrome. This guy saved me, so I guess. Guess he's yeah. my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like fucking Stockholm syndrome. Basically, you know I mean? yeah, like, but yeah, like, like Sweet Tooth after... technically never took him hostage. He literally just saved no. him. No, <laughs> no, he didn't. But yeah, so like Stu goes on the road with Sweet Tooth, and they start like collecting, or they they start going up and down to these outposts, killing. Oh all yes, these and this is because of uh, uh, Stu. He's like, look, if you want to chase that feeling, there are outposts like this all across the country. Yeah. But they went up and down the border first. Yeah. But before we leave, Stu and Sweet Tooth are looking at each other, and Stu's kind of looking past Sweet Tooth, and he sees none other than Mike. 
standing in the background. Oh, yes, hiding behind the counter. Yes, and he said, I found Mike. And I was like, whoa. Yeah, dude. And he picks it up, and he's like, Mike and Ike. And he's like, you want some? And what did, oh, Sweet Tooth's like, I'm more of a Skittles guy. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. He was like, nah, I'm more of a Skittles guy (laughs) myself. They just walks away. Yeah, like this fucking psychopathic monster is just like, oh, no, thanks, bud. Basically, that's basically what he's like. Oh, no, thanks, buddy. And he just walks off all nonchalant. I mean, yeah, although he was a psychopathic murderer, he kind of did just treat Stu like a friend. Well, other, I mean, he treated, Harold was still his best friend, but he did treat Stu like a friend. (laughs) (laughs) But we, we look at Mike and it shows Mike's pants and it shows Mike completely piss himself. I mean, that's a valid reaction, to be fair, to Sweet Tooth. Like, that's valid as fuck. If you were Mike, would you have pissed yourself? I I don't know. I'm not in that situation. I hope not, but... (laughs) You would have pissed yourself. I promise you, you would have. Because I know for a fact I would have if I was Mike. Yeah, probably. There's no way I wouldn't have. But yeah, so Stu goes to get in the van, and he's like, Oh, you can't ride shotgun. Harold ride shotgun. You're right, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> and so he makes him sit on a milk crate in the back of the ice cream man. That was funny as fuck. Yeah, Her- so Harold also- ride shotgun. <laughs> yeah. And fucking Harold what did he do? He killed everyone. No, no, that was that's before. They that's, went up and down. That's later, you stuff. mean. Yeah. Or yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> Uh, they they went up and down these outposts and they fucking freed all the imprisoned people and all that shit. It almost makes Sweet Tooth look like a hero, almost. Then we find his origin story. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Needle, the Needle's opening of this episode. Is it is it Needles Kane or Marcus Kane? I don't remember. Mm. One one is... Uh, so, Sweet Tooth's dad is in the Twisted Metal franchise. Uh I think it's Marcus Kane is the dad, and Needles Kane is... Fuck, I can't remember. Anyways, sorry for any Twisted Metal fans. I can't remember the lore exactly. and I don't care enough to actually go correct myself, because as soon as I start fucking looking at shit, I'll automatically forget what we were talking about, and then I'll start fucking talking about something random. And do we really fucking want that? This podcast is nothing but facts information and staying on topic isn't that right so uh needles cane is sweet tooth i thought so yes so yes needles cane uh is a child actor and he's conveying to his mom and stepdad oh we get a big we get a big uh reveal of sweet tooth's dad he said if it wasn't for me you would still be with your dad living in that dirty old taxi yellow jacket is i think it's Marcus Kane is his dad. Was that was that was that his real dad? I thought that was implied that that was his stepdad. That's that's what I'm saying. His stepdad said, "If it wasn't for me, you'd be living in that dirty old taxi." Oh, uh, so you're asking who his real dad is, or who is a uh, yeah, who, yeah. His what's his, what's is? his real dad's name? Uh, yeah, what's we see if you can figure out what his real dad's name is. But he drives a car. I think it's called Yellow Jacket. Charlie Kane. And, uh, Charlie Kane, Marcus Kane is his fucking brother. That's right. Okay. Uh, Charlie Kane, he, his stepdad says, if it wasn't for me, though, you'd be still like living in that dirty old taxi, which implies that yellow, yellow jacket, I think is the car's name. And, uh, yes. And, uh, Marcus Mar- Kane is his split personality. Oh, Marcus Kane is his split personality? Yes, that's what this says. It Holy says, shit. Uh, so Sweet, Sweet Tooth has the most relationships to any group of characters in the entire series. His father, Charlie Kane, driver of Yellow Jacket in the first game, and Marcus Kane, and it says split personality, real kills driver. Yeah, okay, that's all it says about that. That is bad. Yeah. The Twisted Metal fucking lore is yeah, so confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Like I said, if you if you want to know, I think most game Marvel, series from that time period kind of are like the Mortal Kombat timeline is insane when you look at it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's fucking crazy. I, my suggestion is if you somehow made it this far without like not wanting the show to be spoiled and you haven't seen it, I would go watch it. You're probably co- it you're it. probably already confused. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just go watch it and then look up like a timeline video that explains the stories and stuff. There are plenty of videos out there. 
Oh, I don't think either one of us could do that. No, no. I don't know anything about the games at all. But anyways, he's a child actor, and he kills a fucking dog. He murders the shit out of a fucking dog. Whose name was Billy. That son of a bitch. Needles Kane, you piece of shit. I know, dude. And he gets he gets locked up in an institution. So when the world collapsed, he went and captured his parents and put them in his prison cell. And he gave a Samoa Jess a Samoa Joe S promo on his parents, didn't he? Yes. He said he did. Scott Hall. Oh, I don't want to say anything bad about Scott Hall. Never mind. Oh, since R. I. P. Yeah. Scott Hall. Yeah, since yeah. that. I was going to try to do Samoa Joe's promo that he cut on Scott Hall and Impact, but no, I'm not going to do that. No, he takes cause... two to this room where his parents are locked up, and it's just <laughs> their decrepit, decayed fucking bodies. Yeah. And he's like, my parents never listened. Now they listen. Yeah. But before they ever go in the fucking prison, he leaves a revolver next to Harold, and he says, <laughs> Harold's in charge. <laughs> he's like, don't make Harold kill you or whatever. And so they, they, he drops that fucking, fucking <laughs> bomb on Stu, and Stu's just like, holy shit, this guy is actually, like, insane, <laughs> holy shit. And then they go back outside, and all of his fucking little posse is dead, and his first reaction is, Harold, what did you do? <laughs> yeah. Harold, why did you kill everyone? Harold, why did you kill everyone? And then Stu's and... like, watch out, because they're fucking snipers. Yeah, so Stu saves Sweet Tooth, which I thought was pretty cool. Didn't you? Yeah, I thought it was awesome. It just shows. Too. It I just shows like, yes. the S brothers. The S brothers are. Are you know, it's real? Yeah, it's a real brotherhood there. And know? I think I think Sweet Tooth knows that. Yeah, I think he found out that you know his real brother there is Stu. The S brother relationship will survive, you know, the test of time. I hope it does. Yeah. So. He, uh, who is it? Is it Mike that takes the shots? I think on uh, Sweet Tooth and Stu. I think it is Mike. I don't remember. Well, Stone was pissed that that Sweet Tooth was like fucking going up and down his little border bullshit, killing everybody, and so he's just like, "I'll take care of this clown myself." It's like I'm tired yeah, of this well, fucking clown. That didn't really work. Too I well. thought it was Stone doing yeah. the shooting, but. It may have been Stone, but I, I thought it might have been Mike. Well, anyways, regardless, Mike goes down there to confirm the kills, and fucking Stu just sits up, and he fucking, like, he's like, he, like, pulls the, what's supposed to be blood on the top of his head, and he licks it, and he's like, mm. it's like fucking jam or some shit. <laughs> fucking so sweet dude managed to fucking smear jam on his head to make <sighs> Stu look dead. It's like, <laughs> Man, this guy is a fucking <laughs> kind-hearted soul. <laughs> this guy, this guy is prepared for everything too. <laughs> He's prepared yeah. to play possum, dude. Yeah, and so fucking Sweet Tooth kills everybody except Mike, and Stu saves his his best friend. That, by the way, I don't know if you knew this or not, but they had been best friends since they were like kid kids. You know, like. I knew that once he said the line of, dude, I've known you since second grade when we were throwing pencils at the back of whoever the fuck's head and whoever the fuck's class. Yeah, okay. So you did. I didn't know if you picked up on that because you almost fucking forgot about the car getting eat my truck scene. So. Well, yeah, because I didn't remember saying it swallowed him because it doesn't. that's not what I would describe that as because he literally just drives into the back of the fucking truck. <laughs> well, and- maybe it fucking pac man him. It, yeah, fair enough, I guess. Waka, 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 waka. Waka, Willy Waka? Oompa. Yeah, Loompa, Willy Waka. Doopity, doop. Didn't we do an episode on the Christmas Carol, the Muppets Christmas Carol? Yes, but what does that have to do with Willy Waka? I don't fucking know. I was thinking about the, the Muppet that goes waka, 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 waka. Oh, oh, you know that guy? animal? No, is that no. the... Wait, there's a Muppet that does that? It's Waka, Waka or something like oh. that. I don't know. He goes, he goes, hey, it's me, I'm the guy. Walk, 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 walk. Oh, yeah, it's the one. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we did an episode on that, though, if anyone wants to listen to it. Yeah, you should go watch it's like, that episode. It's like episode seven of this show or something like Holy that. Holy shit. It's like early. It's that early. Was it's early. Seven? That yeah, was when we dude. still did them in person. Holy shit. Holy shit, yeah. 
Yeah. It's crazy. Wow. The show is getting so old. <laughs> we have a we have an idea for episode two hundred. Already? Yeah, it's what we were talking about before we started recording. <laughs> that is just gonna be episode two hundred. <laughs> two hundred. Let's just say the biggest podcast in the world. We're coming for you. <laughs> That's all we're gonna say about that. That's all we'll say for now. Back to episode Twisted Metal. <laughs> we will get you. But back to Twisted Metal. So Sweet Tooth takes uh, Mike hostage and he tells Stu, he's like, all right, that's fine. We'll take him with us. But you're going to have to clean up after him. Yeah. <laughs> like he's a fucking animal. Just a pet. Yeah. And I guess we don't see them again, do we? What do you mean? We don't see them again till the end. Isn't that right? Uh, we see them, uh, we see them like right before they go out to go after Stone because that Mike and uh, Stu had that whole conversation about, because Sweet Two takes a bathroom break and then Mike and Stu had the whole conversation about like, Mike is like, look, that clown is not your friend. And that, then that's yeah. when they, they have that whole spill about the second great conversation or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, Mike manipulates Stu into believing that Sweet Tooth isn't actually his friend when in reality that's what I'm saying dude I was like I don't know if I was Stu like man I wouldn't want to be friends with Sweet Tooth because obviously he's a psychopath but I wouldn't want to be friends with fucking Mike either so that's kind of your you're between a rock and a hard place literally you would be dead if not for Sweet Tooth like that Mike would have got you fucking killed (laughs) Yeah, no fucking joking. At least Sweet Tooth, when he goes to kill you, to be fucking quick and painless. Uh, maybe not painless, but quick. Yeah, it would be quick. Probably, <laughs> yeah, right. probably not painless. Well, if he kills you quick enough, your pain receptors probably won't even feel it. You'll be dead. That's true. So, who knows? It just depends on what he feels like doing, probably. Yeah. He so. is the type of guy that would cut your arms off, though, and just uh, fucking, like, slap you with your own arms. Literally. Just, just cut both your arms off and then just start, you know, clapping, clapping your head with them. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> All right, make a fist. Quit hitting yourself. Quit hitting yourself. Quit hitting yourself. I can see that. Uh, that needs to be in the next season. I I didn't but, know there was going to be a next season until you know. Obviously, the the finale kind of ends on quite a cliffhanger, but uh, quite a couple so cliffhangers they, actually. There, there. So let's just go ahead and skip to the end. Nothing really happens, like I said, with John and Quiet. Every character that you meet, except for, like, Preacher, I think, they square off in this, like, final showdown, which is very reminiscent of what a Twisted Metal game kind of is. It's like this giant free-for-all, just smash, smash, mouth, drag-out tournament, basically. It's not even a tournament. It's just a, it's just a battle royal, pretty much. And... We have John and Quiet driving Roadkill now, which is a car that's like a mainstay in the Twisted Metal franchise. But I'm pretty sure in each game and each variation of Roadkill, it does have a different driver all the time. It's never necessarily the same. So, I mean, it's and I guess it's kind of cool that John and Quiet get to be the one driving it. Uh, so they finally, they did get the package from New Chicago and they're on their way back to New, to San Francisco to yeah, deliver because, it. Yeah, uh, yeah, it said, uh, Sweet Tooth's father used to drive Roadkill and the thing I looked up earlier. Yeah, yeah. He, he has, like I said, so, there's, yeah, that's kind of cool though. Driver. Yeah. Marcus Kane has also driven Roadkill. Yes. Which we found out is Sweet Tooth's personality. Very confusing. No, Sweet Tooth's father's split personality. Oh, my bad. Yeah, Sweet Tooth's father's split personality. Sweet Tooth, uh, uh, as far as I know, does not have a split personality. He's just fucking Sweet Tooth. Yes. Uh, did you know that Sweet Tooth does have a brother, though? And, no, I did uh, not. Uh, yeah, it's like in Twisted Metal Black, his dad dies, and so his brother like reanimates him to make him drive Yellow Jacket or some shit like that. The hell? I don't fucking know. Shit, dude, dude this shit shouldn't big... sound so, like, crazy to me because I've seen fucking Yu-Gi-Oh, but it still sounds crazy because it's, like, it's just crazy in a different way than Yu-Gi-Oh is. You want to hear, like, the big spoiler to Twisted Metal Black? What's that? It's all takes place inside of Sweet Tooth's head. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. That sounds interesting as fuck, though. No, yeah, no, no, no. After after we're done here, if like you ain't doing anything better, go fucking look up the story behind Twisted Metal Black, and like you'll do like I listen to like the character bullshit for each character, and then like the overall story and stuff, and it it's pretty interesting. But yeah, we have the final showdown. Sweet Tooth shows up, and he fucking squirts lighter fuel all over his head. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, Stu, light me up. And fucking Sue lights his head on fire. And I was like, holy shit, we get the fucking iconic Sweet Tooth look. That's so cool. Yeah, that was awesome. And so everybody's getting fucked up. Uh, we have Twister fucking driving around in her fucking little, or what was her name? Fucking Amanda. Driving around in her little car, Twister. Fucking stealing homing missiles and driving fucking with them chasing her and shit. We have Sweet Tooth fucking with his head lit on fire, blowing everybody up. And then Mike is like, yo, man, fuck this guy. Oh, no, no, no. Sweet Tooth blew up the big truck. That's what it was. He blew up the big truck that was on their side that had... uh, uh, Rose? Man, who... Yes, that had Rose and then somebody else. Yeah, the the other other girl. One of the other girls in it. And Stu and Mike were like, yo, that guy... that." They were on our side, and he's just like, the sides? fuck are you talking about? Sides. sides. <laughs> there are no yeah, sides. He's just, Everybody yeah, he's burns. just playing for himself. Yeah, and so he, like, fucking, I guess, didn't he, like, anticipate one of them pulling a gun on him and trying to shoot him or some shit? Yeah, dude, he, as soon as Mike, like, pulled a gun, he's like, oh, Mike. <laughs> oh, bad idea. <laughs> and then he fucking shoots him. And then Stu ends up, or Stu ends up shooting Sweet Tooth in the eye. Yeah. And they fall out of the fucking. They fall out of the van, and uh, yeah, doesn't the van get exploded? I'm not sure what happens, but Mike and uh, Stu eventually find like their own vehicle, and they like hit Sweet Tooth. Yeah, they with fucking it. run him over. Yeah, and they're like, oh, "Is he dead?" And Mike's like, "I don't know. Do you want to go back and check?" He's like, "Hell no, nah. hell no." <laughs> Maybe you should have. Oh. Maybe you should have. Yeah. <laughs> so. John and Quiet finally get to San Francisco, deliver the package, and Raven is like, all right, John, you get to come in, but the girl doesn't. And John's like, I'm not going in if I can't go in with her. And Raven's like, well, all right, whatever, fuck you. And so then Quiet pulls a gun on John again and shoots him. Are, are we just? And- are we not even going to mention the fact that Stone finally fucking died? And he died the same way oh, that yeah. uh, Quiet's brother did? Yeah. Well, we didn't see him shoot himself. That's true, but yeah, that's true. Was he? He may have just pulled a shot on at them, and or maybe, maybe Dana, next season they reveal pussy. he's still alive. Maybe he's too much. Remember, he was too much of a pussy to like, you know, even stop them people from robbing him in the past. That pregnant lady and her husband, who he could have easily overpowered. Maybe he's too much of a pussy to to do anything to like kill himself or something too, because you know he's basically left for dead out there. Yeah, you know. So it's implied that Stone died, but we did not see an on screen death. That's so. True. I don't think he's dead. He they may bring him be. back. They may bring him back. Uh, oh, did we even mention John Doe is called John Doe because he woke up his first memory is like it's seven or eight years old and he's just like fucking bleeding from his head from a car and he doesn't remember anything so he has amnesia so uh, there's uh, that about john doe yeah i don't think we ever mentioned that but isn't that i don't know i feel like most characters in movies that their name's john doe it's just because like they they don't know their identity yeah and john then they fucking, is. and then uh, and then they're like standing there and they're like Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne, and a dr- and a bus drives by, and the person disappears. <laughs> uh, I remember any time yeah. someone walked by on a bus, I'd do that shit at school. I'd just say that. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need to sing you. Remind me to sing you some fucking Roman Reigns memes. I have some good Roman Reigns. <laughs> Roman Reigns. I have, I have one. Have you seen him where he comes into the press conference and he's like, yeah. Yeah, you ain't expect to see me here, huh? The shock looks on your faces, huh? You ain't expect to see me <laughs> no, back, I huh? I'm, I don't think I've seen that. But the captions, it said, when I show up to my ex's family's Thanksgiving, because now I'm <laughs> dating the sister. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, yeah, send me that one. You're gonna have to send me okay. that one. There's a, there's a couple of them that are pretty fucking. No, good. that sounds funny as shit. Laugh. That sounds fucking incredible. Yeah, I'll send you a couple of them. But uh, yeah, they so they get to New San Francisco, like I said, and John. What what Raven wants is John to participate in this tournament that Calypso is hosting. She wants him to participate in the Twisted Metal tournament. And it has the best drivers of all. We see a lot of people. We see Preacher. We see uh, Amber. We see Sweet Tooth. We see Axel. We see just all kinds of characters. And uh, then, oh, Rose. What? I keep calling her Rose. I keep wanting to call her Rose. Quiet doesn't get to come in. She takes Roadkill, and she's just off, like, basically being a Robin Hood. She's just stealing oh, yeah. shit and giving it to the people outside the cities that, like, need it. Which, you know, good on her. But she gets stopped by Dollface, and Dollface says, <laughs> I heard you may know my brother. So is that, like, is that a thing oh, in the games? John, John. Is Dollface no. like John's brother? John's not in the games, as far as I know. Oh, no, he's a made-up character. Is Quiet made up? Yeah. Uh, she may not be, I don't remember. Okay, interesting. Okay, so John, so the main, the main character... Dollface is... Well, does, why do why do franchises keep doing that though? Why do they like make the main protagonist a main up character? Like, what do people really want that? No, <laughs> not at all. So I, like, I am people, and I don't like that. I don't either. I didn't like it in the Mortal Kombat movie. I like I know it's Anthony Mackie, but I don't really love it in this. <laughs> but I mean, I'm not as big of a Twisted Metal fan as I am a Mortal Kombat fan. I know more more about Mortal Kombat, so. I thought it was. To dumb. be fair, I thought it was though, dumber than that. To it, be fair, like Mortal Kombat tried to follow the story of Mortal Kombat. Yeah, this kind of did it. So thing, to make but, a makeup character is kind of stupid. It was very stupid. And just to try to fucking follow. Try it. to tie it yeah. into the Scorpion heritage too. Like you can't just do that. Scorpion's not just any fucking character, bro. <laughs> yeah. But, like, this, I didn't care as much because it's, like, this whole story isn't even close to being what the Twisted Metal franchise is about. So it's fine. Like, they're doing something different regardless. So that's okay. But, yeah, so you meet Dollface. You find out Sweet Tooth is alive whenever he kills Mike and then takes Stu hostage. This time he took him hostage. I was just waiting for Sweet Tooth to show back up this entire episode, I'll be honest. (laughs) because <laughs> i knew he was dead. not they fucking played, dead if they just played a vignette at the end and just r.i.p sweet tooth <laughs> i would have cried and not watched season two but i do <laughs> like the way they did I, I do like the way they did sweet tooth in this they made him almost like a hero but then they're like we can't really have this guy as a hero because he is a complete and fucking psychopath so they have him kill a dog and then you're like well, if you can have him, if you can forgive him for killing a dog, we're just going to have him, like, fucking go crazy and just start killing every character that you may possibly like. That's when they tried to, like, basically just turn him into, make people realize, oh, you're not really a good guy. You're just a complete fucking lunatic. So I did like that. That was pretty neat. I never thought he was a good guy, but, I mean, I, he's still my favorite character in the fucking show. <laughs> I mean, I, I get you may not think he's a good guy, but fuck, I mean, look how many people he freed from the, the highway, or the lawmen, or whatever they're called. Oh, yeah. From, like, that, it makes him really seem like he's at least, like, an anti-hero, you know? But in reality, I mean, he kind of is an anti-hero, though. He's not on anyone's side. I mean, yeah, but, like, you think of an anti-hero, you think of, like, Venom, you know? I don't know, but this is a universe where, like, killing is not, like, it's... It's not really wrong in this part of things. Yeah, but like you wouldn't see John Doe just pl- point blank execute someone because he's bored. Yeah, okay, that's true, I guess. But Sweet Tooth isn't like he's not a hero, but he he's more of a, not even a villain. He he's just a fucking raging lunatic. Yeah, he's just he's, he's more just so a, a psychopath. He yeah, he's, he's just someone that lunatic. belongs in Arkham Asylum. Yeah, fucking imagine Sweet Tooth versus Batman. Who would win? Why not Sweet Tooth versus the Joker? Well, because given enough time to prepare, apparently Batman can beat anybody. And also, uh, Sweet Tooth would probably murder the fuck out of the Joker, so... Yeah. <laughs> like, Joker. Bond, like, yeah, Joker wouldn't stand a chance physically. He'd be like... <laughs> fucking he, Sweet Tooth 
put on his performance and Joker would be like, that's awful. And then they'd be friends. And then Sweet Tooth would light his head on fire and Joker would just look over and then he'd pull a fucking burner phone out of his pocket and he'd just be like, yeah, is this Batman? <laughs> yeah, man, I'm gonna fucking turn myself in. This dude is fucking crazy. <laughs> like, I'm crazy, but this motherfucker just put his head on fire. Yeah, I know I've cut my face off before. This guy just lit his head on fire and is now trying to light his dick on fire. What the fuck is going on with him? Uh, oh, yeah, I, Batman, he just he just uh, fucking ripped a dude's head off, clean off the shoulders. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, he's a regular human man. Yeah, no, he just ripped it straight. Oh, oh, now he's playing soccer with the head. Okay, yeah, no, no, I'm getting out of here. That would uh, be the conversation. Yeah, I mean, I think Batman could beat Sweet Tooth, but Batman can beat, like, anyone, so. Especially, like. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Sweet Tooth is still just a human, so yes. Batman versus Anakin Skywalker, who wins? Fuck you, that's Darth Vader, that's not fair. <laughs> No, that's before he was Darth Vader. That Anakin Skywalker is the greatest Jedi that ever existed. But what does that matter? Does, does is, are Jedi better than the Sith? Like automatically? No, because the Emperor made Darth Vader that way. Like the technology in Darth Vader's suit was old, so he lived in constant pain, and like the whole breathing apparatus thing was purposefully so Darth Vader could not overthrow the Emperor. The Emperor could kill him very easily if he needed to. That's fucked up. He had to keep he had to keep Darth Vader under him. He could not let the apprentice take over the Lord. The Sith Lord. Because he knew he was more powerful. Anakin Skywalker was more powerful than the Emperor. Yeah, that's why he did that. But if you like listen to Metaclorian bullshit, whenever he got like cut up by Obi Wan then he became less powerful than the Emperor. And then the Emperor kind of, like, not depowered him more, but, like, kept him in, like, a a state where he could easily keep manipulating him and all that bullshit. Maybe I should watch so these who movies sometimes. <gasps> you should. Uh, so, uh, so good. Probably, uh, I don't want to say it. Not Batman. Oh. I'm telling you, man. This is this is this will be the end of my Star Wars tangent. Look, here, the but... best Star Wars character is Darth Maul. Yeah, he's he's pretty fucking awesome. He's so lie. fucking cool. He's got the dopest lightsaber. Okay, like the double sided oh, one. There's some cooler ones. I don't know. Oh don't no, know. no no yeah, no no no. The double sided is cool. It's but so there there are some dope. cooler lightsabers through the series. I don't know. Dude. Ahsoka it's Tano. Like, I don't know. It fits the character too. Like that just looks dope as shit with Darth Maul. Like oh, anyone man. else holding that thing, it wouldn't look as cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know Obi Wan. Like spoilers alert for Star Wars Rebels. Did Did he hold it? No. Obi Wan dismantles Darth Maul. Well, fuck Obi Wan. Star Wars Rebels, like almost immediately. Yeah. Fuck him then. So he goes for like the classic. Obi Wan pose, but then he's like, or no, he goes to like the Qui Gon Jinn pose, and then he goes to like the classic Obi Wan pose, and then he goes to the Alec McGinnis fucking pose, or it's somewhere in that order. And Darth Maul fucking runs at him, and fucking Obi Wan just <clears throat> kills him. And like Darth Maul is like, he figured out that Obi Wan was on protection duty, protecting Luke, and he like in his dying breath, he said to Obi Wan, he's like, is he the chosen one and obi-wan says yes he's like will he bring balance to the force and obi-wan's like yes and darth maul's like does my lightsaber look cool and obi-wan's like yes <laughs> so <laughs> all right let's be in the star wars yes yes oh god but yeah, I don't really have anything more to say on Twisted Metal. MVP of the show? MVP of the show, I think we'll have to give MP- MVP of the show to the uh, old naked man pushing the buggy. That, oh my uh, god, no. <laughs> that almost had no. sex with John Lennon. No, the on. necrophiliac? Why? Because <laughs> he was funny. No, he was <laughs> not. He was creepy. Yeah, kind of. Okay, that I stabbed guess I himself in the eye? Yeah, I guess if I can't give it to him, I'll give it to Sweet Tooth because that character was the fucking show. Like, I think the show would have been okay without it, but because he was in it, 
it just made oh. it that much better. Yeah, no, the, I can't imagine. If you did, I can't if, imagine if you the took, show without him. No, if you took Stu out too, Stu and Sweet Tooth, that show, I don't think that show would have been good at all. Oh, me either. It's like uh, through and through the best fucking storyline. Yeah, it's just so silly and goofy, and that's what made it so much fun. Yes. I love the fact that the show really didn't try to take itself that serious. But in season two, I do hope they keep kind of the same tone. But in some of the more dramatic moments, you can let the show get a little dramatic. That's fine. I don't think, like, your casual fan, which I guess would be us, since we're not like Twisted Metal diehards or nothing, we're not going to care if the show gets a little, a little dark, a little dramatic. You don't have to fucking throw a joke in there. You don't have to keep it all lighthearted. Yeah, I no. think me and you both realize this show's like this fucking lore behind this show is fucking dark. Yeah, I was expecting the show to be way darker metal. because of that. Yeah, especially so. like after you told me uh, Dollface's like backstory, I'm like, what? What the hell? <laughs> yeah, I don't and, even remember Dollface's like backstory now. Oh wait, I read it. That's right. Yeah, yeah, but that that shit, it's good. It's it's a good. I feel like this is a good series or a good franchise that deserves a, a, a little series behind it because it's a franchise that's been dead for a while. I think the last game that came out was like in 2012. Oh my. And I don't think, I don't think anything of this franchise is anything has been done with it. It's kind of crazy I, that the has, show happened then. Yeah, no joke. It's like, there's been a, I guess there was just a couple of guys in Hollywood. They were like, yo man, remember when we used to play Twisted Metal? And another guy was like, yeah. Like, hey, do you, do you think is he the chosen one? The other guy was like, "Is just just does my lightsaber look cool?" The other guy was like, "Yes." So you know that happened. Is Sweet Tooth the best character in Twisted Metal? The other yes. guy was like, "Yes, <laughs> yes." But yeah. Uh, how do we rate shows? Do we rate shows? Do we rate anything? Yeah, let's rate shows, I or, guess. I don't know. Let's rate oh, them. Let's rate... Okay. okay, so on a scale... Okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, I guess, how twisted was this metal? Oh, it was pretty fucking twisted. Uh, because I'm, I'm happy how they set up for a season 2, I can forgive a lot of stuff that the show did because it's like it kind of makes sense I normally don't, and I think I think you're like this too. Do you, do you like it normally when shows do shit like this or movies do shit like this? They basically just build for a sequel. They they build for a sequel. What do you mean? Like the whole show is just built for the next fucking next fucking movie or next fucking oh. like, series. Like this this whole thing was just just a way to introduce us to the actual twisted metal tournament. When they could have just done that to begin with. Yeah, I usually don't like when shows do that, but I mean, I'm fine with it in this case since I knew absolutely nothing about Twisted Metal. But if it, like, if yeah. I if I had known about this show, maybe if that's what I was wanting from the show, like the tournament, I might be a little upset with it. <laughs> like basically how Mortal Kombat did it. Yeah, how they kind of like do the introduction phase the first half, and then the tournament's the second half. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like if, if the whole Mortal Kombat movie was just building to a tournament and then the next movie was the tournament, that that would have made that movie so much fucking worse. <laughs> it would have it made it just lame. Wait, yeah. yeah. I mean, parts of it are already kind of lame. But hey, we've talked about that on the podcast too. Go check that out. Holy shit. Hey, you can listen that? to this show on Spotify and iTunes and YouTube and wherever else you know you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to me on YouTube I if listen. you're not for some reason listening to on there right now. The Red Arrow. And you can follow me on Letterbox, The Red Arrow. And yeah, Andrew, I guess if you want to plug anything, you can. Yeah, I ain't got nothing to plug. Yeah. Instead what of waiting until the end. YouTube? What all do I post on my YouTube? Oh my god. Episodes of this show that's so random. Episode. Also, I don't even know if we introduced ourselves at the beginning of this one. I'm Brady. We did. We did. <laughs> oh, we did. We did. Okay. Yeah, we did. It's been. Oh, look, it's been a long day. Like I said at the beginning, I remember yeah. saying that, but I don't remember saying my own name. Yeah. Well, yeah. I said your name. 
and you said my name. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, my name yeah. was the first word of this episode. That's correct. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I remember now. You refreshed yeah. the memory. But yeah, you know, episodes of this show that's so random. Episodes of the other podcasts I do, uh, Giggly Gorillas, just then some random stuff every now and then, you know. Just of a, a lot of DC content, a lot of DC animated stuff, anything like movie related. You have the opinion. You're the only YouTube channel that has the opinion that the Tomorrowverse is the best thing that that's ever happened to the DC animated universe, right? That made no sense what you just said, but yes. Oh, well, <laughs> if it makes sense later on in life, then you understand. You're welcome. Yeah, but yeah I give the show <laughs> at least at least a seven out of the twisted of the metal so it's like uh, that metal was pretty pretty twisted okay so it's twisted like quintuple metal it's twisted seven septillion seven tenths of the way yeah you know i I think i'll 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 just agree with you because i I don't really feel like giving it any lower than that and any higher kind of feels too high like it didn't do anything that crazy but it was just it's an entertaining fun watch and only 30 minutes episodes it it's nothing like it's it's such an easy watch oh they had they had pretty creative kills and stuff too it wasn't overly gory which i really enjoyed yeah i was expecting like, it to way, be way more dark and way more violent than it actually was like yeah there's still some stuff that's a little bit gruesome but it's never gruesome maybe but not graphic it's never that graphic yeah if you if you watched the saw movies before and you were like ugh i don't like this then you can watch this and be like, man, I wish Saul was more like this. I've never seen like, Saul, but yeah, this seems way less gruesome. If you've watched Saul House like. of a Thousand Corpses before. No, oh, I and- fucking hate that movie. God damn, I hate that movie. <laughs> fuck that. Did you say that because you know I hate that movie? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> I, didn't know, I, really I didn't know if I've ever over. told you about my disdain oh, of that no. movie. We, we've had this conversation twice. You told me the first time you ever watched about how much you hated it, and then I brought up Rob Zombie one day, and you were telling me how much you hated it. God, I can't imagine how bad I was the first time. If I fucking told you, went out of my way to tell you how much I hated this fucking movie. Yeah, you were like, dude, I just watched the most fucking, like, worst thing ever. What was it? You're like, House of a Thousand Corpses. I was like, I don't even know what the fuck that is. <laughs> I think you said, consider yourself lucky or something like that. Probably. I was like, damn. <laughs> he fucking hates this shit. That's funny as shit. I don't know yeah. how you remember that. I don't know. I remember a bunch of unnecessary stupid shit. So anyways, come back next week when we Ooh. do a commentary over House of a Thousand Corpses. <laughs> no, hell no, that will not be happening, but something random oh. will be. Probably. Oh. oh. <laughs> Come back next week when we will be predicting the New Orleans Saints schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the Saints. <laughs> just, to, just to fucking wait. How many weeks till kickoff? Fucking. We have thirty-two weeks. Uh, thirty-two. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Thirty-two. What? There's like four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn! Well, what's thirty-two divided by four, and then we could just do that many that many teams predictions until kickoff. Eight. Okay, we're getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs>